This is Victoria 3, a game I have been playing an absolute ton of since it came out a few weeks ago. Mostly because there's one country I'm trying to learn how to play, and I bet you all know what country that is. That's right, we're looking at Japan, specifically the Japanese Shogunate. Now, I've done this a number of times to try to figure out the best way to do it, but unfortunately I've come to discover it's really different every time. That's because this game is pretty heavy into the RNG, the, the, the randomness uh, aspect of it, which is normally something I'm not that fond of in games. But, with that said, I'm going to go through here today what I kind of have been doing to modernize the Shogunate and bring it up to the 1800s standard here. And, and really the, the main goal here is eliminating the power of the Shogun. However, this channel is called the Shogunate, so I don't want to overthrow the Shogunate necessarily. I don't want to go and try to achieve the Meiji Restoration event, which is totally possible and doable. Rather, I want to really just reform our country's laws here and bring uh, Japan out of its isolation and into the, the modern world here, but with the samurai ruling it. I think that'd be a really cool play style here. So, what we're going to do is uh, begin reforming our government a bit. We're going to take out the samurai right away. And we're going to instead put the intelligentsia in, all the academics and bureaucrats, because they're going to be the ones who are going to be leading Japan into the new era. We are also going to start bolstering the intelligentsia, making them a bit more popular. And uh, on the opposite side of that, our main enemy right away are going to be the Buddhist monks. They kind of want to hold us back in the past. So we're going to suppress them. Now, the reason I do this is because the first uh, political law here I want to change up is our education system. I want to get private schools. Not only because it'll help, you know, boost our overall literacy throughout Japan, because it's, it's, it's not bad, but it could be better. But also, it'll give us an institution that will help boost the intelligentsia even more, making them stronger in the government overall. But before we can even consider changing our law here to private schools, we are going to need to have um, really a, a standard of education. So we're going to have to go to technology, society, and uh, go to academia. This will allow us to get private schools even in the first place. And it'll allow us to build universities, which will become very important. Now, another thing we want to do right off the bat is uh, get rid of our generals here because they boost other groups that we kind of don't want in the government, uh, like the uh, petite bourgeoisie. So we're going to retire this guy. Uh, this guy uh, boosts the shogunate. We're going to retire him. And um, yeah, the shogunate retire. And what's funny is when we retire them, they're actually like killing themselves, it looks like. And with that, we can kind of hit play and just let things roll a bit. The one thing I've discovered is that uh, Victoria 3 can often seem like a waiting game. You're just spending a lot of time sitting here waiting for things to happen, waiting for things to build, waiting for laws to pass, uh, th all that stuff. It, I, I know, oh, there we have Academia, that's good. For the next technology, I recommend kind of making a beeline to the lathe here. Um, it'll just help our industry and we want to eventually get capitalists uh, involved in the government. Looks like uh, there's an opium war going on right now. England is pushing into China. They've taken Beijing. So what I used to do is try to rush to colonize uh, this colon island here and, and um, the rest of Hokkaido. But it always seems like in, in every game I play, Russia just is too quick with it and and colonizes both of them before I can ever really get a chance to, uh, which is not a big deal. We can push Russia uh, off. I've, I've heard some people saying if, if you deal with a Russia like this in game, you should just restart because it, it's annoying. I don't think you need to restart. It's, it's not a big issue to eventually um, declare war on them, push them off, and also force them to recognize you as a uh, regional power or major power. All right, we have a university and uh, they're going to start hiring, get academics in there. Uh, right away, make sure it's uh, secular academia so we don't have any of the clergy in there. We don't want any more Buddhist monks in there. Um, so get that. Also, um, a funny thing to point out, I don't know if this is the same with anyone else's game, but uh, my air is always uh, naked. I have no idea why. 
Oh, okay, we got a university. This is a nice event that happens when you build, like, I think the second university, uh, at least for Japan. You get two of these here, and you get this event, and uh, the Shogun himself has officially opened the University of Kansai Academia. Uh, is beginning to flourish in the Japanese shogunate. Uh, the one I think is uh, the most important to go through is society should be ruled by philosopher kings because it boosts the political strength of the academics. Uh, and let's look at this. The academics support who? Oh, no one yet. Okay, just just wait. There we go. Now the academics support the intelligentsia. I don't know why it took a little longer that time. And if we look at our, our chance to enact private schools, it's getting closer. It's getting it's getting closer. In fact, I'd say it's probably close enough to give it a try here and force it through. Hopefully nothing bad happens and it gets stalled out. The only group that's against it are the Buddhist monks, and they can be a thorn, but let's see if we can push it through. All right, so so Russia just started colonizing Sakhalin. Um, yeah, like I said, some people might just say restart because they don't want to deal with Russia here. I, let them colonize it. Even if they want part of Hokkaido here, I, I don't care. I'm not going to try to race them for uh, Hokkaido. If they want it, they can have it. We'll take it back from them later. It's not hard to beat Russia in a war. There we go. It took about 10 years, but now we have private schools. So if we look now to... Um, we have an, uh, an, an education institution here, which uh, increases the political strength of uh, the intelligentsia, that's that's really good. So I'm going to stop boosting the intelligentsia, we don't need to boost them right now. And um, same thing with the Buddhist monks, uh, they're not gonna be really in our way right now anymore, so we can stop suppressing them. Um, rather, we're, we're gonna start boosting the peasants. I've, I've done this a, a number of different ways, and you can really, you can either suppress the peasants or boost the peasants because you, you both need the peasants uh, high to get out of traditionalism and get to like agrarianism but then you also want to beat the peasants for getting out of uh, isolationism and into mercantilism um, it, it kind of just depends which one you want to go for first I'd say for the money you could earn because you, you earn a fair bit more with agrarianism you probably should go to get to agrarianism first before you try to end your isolation so let's bolster the peasants let's also put the peasants in the government and take out the intelligentsia we're also gonna need romanticism um, I could have gone for this earlier but I, I didn't I was focusing on some industry stuff um, this is what we're gonna need in order to get to agrarianism so now that we have romanticism we can try to get out of agrarianism um, there is a pretty uh, heavy opposition to it from the Shogun himself, which is going to be problematic. Uh, but let's try to push it through anyway. Um, I've had luck in the past trying to push it through, so let's see if we can do it this time. Um, fingers crossed. And look at that, first try, and we got agrarianism. This is, <laughs> once again, the randomness can work in our favor sometimes too. It, it can randomly succeed the first time, even though it's heavily, uh, heavily uh, opposed. So there we go, that's great. That'll, that'll really help our income a lot. Um, and like I said, opens the door for us to get to per capita. In fact, why don't we just try to get per capita right now? Why don't we just jump on it while we can? Okay, once again, pretty heavy opposition. There are, I think, more people supporting uh, per capita than there was for a... No, it's the same amount, I think. Well, I don't know. Yeah, the, the samurai want to change to per capita. Um, samurai still have a traditionalism guy in charge. See, what's really nice is when you get someone in the, uh, the samurai who is Republican. That changes the game completely. If, if you get a Republican samurai leader, that, that, that really is one of the best things you can get. I know people say, you know, get, get a jingoist uh, sh shogunate because that'll help as well. I, I say the opposite. Get a Republican samurai because he will help you really change your government up in ways that you, you want to change it. So in the rest of the world, uh, Prussia's invading Russia. And, uh, and winning because, like I said, Russia's one of the easier countries to beat in wars. Uh, but it looks like Russia also took over Persia. Okay. Um, the U.S. is invading Mexico. What does the, UN want, the U.S. want with Mexico? They want to conquer Texas, Utah, Arizona, California. And this is going to be the, one of the rare times they succeed because normally 
Um, the U.S. doesn't get this in most of the games that I've played. I, I've had it where Russia comes in to support Mexico, but I think Russia's got their, their hands tied right now. Also, um, Canada's in a bit of crisis. Revolutionary Hudson Bay Company. <laughs> The Shogun intervenes. Even the even the Shogun, despite the, the Shogunate faction not wanting per capita attacks, the Shogun himself knows that we should have per capita attacks. The Shoguns will be done. So in this war, Prussia versus Frankfurt, um, Prussia is trying to conquer Frankfurt, humiliate Russia, and conquer Austria. Not Austria, the country, but um, just the region, Austria. Um, so Prussia is actively trying to create border gore, and they are a menace to the world. We'll see if this becomes an infinite war. Oh, and there we have it, per capita taxation. Fantastic. Um, so that was a big one. The last thing we need to really do, uh, in terms of my own little goals here, is to get out of isolation and to open our borders. And to do that, uh, our main enemy going forward is going to be peasants. So uh, we can kick the peasants out of the government, um, and we can also start uh, suppressing them. <laughs> so they serve their purpose, and we no longer need them. Um, also, we can either bring in the industrialists or the intelligentsia. Let's bring in the industrialists. So um, the uh, U.S.-Mexico war is over. Um, I'd say they won, but I don't think anyone really won here. So the only person in the government who wants mercantilism is the uh, industrialists, and of course the peasants oppose it. Um, they're the only two who are going to be involved in trying to deal with it and open the country up. I'm, I'm surprised the shogunate doesn't want to keep isolationism. Uh, I, I guess um, they don't want to enforce uh, Sakoku all that heavily. It's just the peasants who want it. Oregonian military revolt. Or what? What? <laughs> they did it! They did it! Look at them. Prussia took Austria. That's that's like the biggest humiliation right there. Austria doesn't even own Austria anymore. What? They should change their name. Like, what, what, what could they be now? Just Hungary? Bohemia? Tyrol? Because they're not Austria anymore. Austria is not even owned by Austria. Time for a little bit of uh, rebranding. There we go. We now have mercantilism. That is huge. Okay. So now we can trade with the rest of the world. The last major thing now to, uh, to, to climb out of is migration control, which once again the peasants oppose. So we're going to hop on that one right away uh, just to do it. And uh, then our entire economy and taxation, all of it will have been reformed and we're still, we're still the shogunate. We've essentially fully opened up the country. Migration controls. So, that is really the last major thing to do. The country is completely open. We have a, a functioning uh, economy and trade. Uh, our taxes are, are better. Granted, I'm, I haven't been really flourishing on the economic side of actually making the Japanese economy as good as it probably could be, but I've managed to keep things afloat. We're not terribly in debt or anything. We're earning money. We have a surplus. And this is where you can start taking the direction of if you want to uh, do the Meiji Restoration or if you want to, like I said, I, I kind of want to stay with the Shogunate, but I do want to reform things a bit further. I, I don't have to do any more. At this point, I can kind of pump the brakes and we can be you know, an autocratic monarchy with everything opened up. But let's see how far we can really take things here. Let's see what we can do. And now we have landed voting. So this is really our, our first step here towards moving out of uh, autocracy, changing things up. Um, we're gonna have an election soon. We have, we, we have political parties, as you see now, and um, Right now, the Imperial Way Party is heavily favored. I think the reason for this is because the type of voting we have is landed voting. So the, the people who own land or capital property are given votes, which in this case would be the landowners, the, the shogunate. So it makes sense that they would get the majority of the vote. Oh, it makes a ton of difference. I mean, like, what is that? Versus if you change it to that, like... 
<laughs> that's such a weird way to show things in the, the blocks. Yeah, definitely. Let's keep the circles. Oh, 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 oh. We have a Republican samurai. This is everything. This is... He wants to join the Imperial rule. God damn. Well. Look what we have here. The serfdom has been abolished. So that should majorly reduce... Yeah, so they, they completely lost 50% from that. Um, but the struggle continues. All right, so there's a revolution brewing. This is we're gonna we're gonna let it happen. We're gonna we're gonna let it happen. We're gonna try to <laughs> try to win it if we can. Okay, so here we go. That, and on top of that, we're also going to make them the best we possibly can make them. And give them all mobile artillery. So our army will be as advanced as it can possibly be. We're also going to bump up military wages too, so uh, the samurai can hit a little harder. Yeah, see, we updated our military after the fact, and they're just attacking us with peasant levies. Our boys are tired. They're slowing down. So okay, I'm going to take this other army here and make him push as well. Well, either way, they have capitulated. So now peace can be returned. The Shogunate now is... They're not marginalized yet, despite only having 0.4%. Look, look at the Shogun. Look at the... <laughs> look at the Shogun. <laughs> oh my god. Did we kill the Shogun in the war? Is that what happened? Did we, did we kill the... Did we kill Ienari in the war? He must have. He's no longer with us. He's a member of the Buddhist monks? How does that make any sense? All right, screw wealth voting, didn't pass, tired of this. So the leader of the samurai faction isn't a Republican anymore, he's a nihilist. I'm not a uh, Democrat either, I'm a nihilist. So Russia's at war with France. I wonder if we can take the opportunity to seize Hokkaido. So we're going to do a conquer state just for Hokkaido. Maybe also, um, screw it, let's try to take uh, Sakhalin as well. Why not? War, Russia. Look at all their puppets coming in. What? Why do we still have peasants? Hang on. Oh my god, all of our... <sighs> we now have elected bureaucrats. Perfect. Let's focus on winning this war. In fact, actually, let's, let's get a uh, professional army. Why not? I, I really don't... <laughs> the front lines are so ridiculous in this game like does anyone know what exactly is going on here it's it's just so bizarre with this we're gonna have the great victory at Sakhalin oh, almost final little battle and boom we now control all of that just gotta wait for the Russians to capitulate peace deal what's the peace deal they just want to give us everything. <laughs> Current peace deal. Yeah, we'll, we'll accept their peace deal. Okay, there we go. So we got everything. Conquered Hokkaido. We are now a recognized world power, and we have Sakhalin. So that is what we've become now. See, the, the Shogunate's going to come back regardless because we still have... I, I think it's because we still have landed voting, which means they still have a ton of votes, essentially. Alright, so here we go, second uh, Boshin War. Uh, I don't know why they don't put anyone over here ever in Western Japan, but just keep that in mind, the AI doesn't, and then you can either take it or you can avoid it. I'm gonna avoid it this time. We now have the Parliamentary Republic, but we have to win the war. It means nothing if we don't win the war. It's beautiful. 
It's all coming together. After two civil wars. But still. Why do these guys do this? They all just leave the line after a while. I've had this happen so many times. Like, why do they... Like, what's the deal? Okay, okay. Marching on Edo. For the second time in, I think, a decade. Maybe two decades. I don't know. Doing it again. There we go. Ugh. Ugh, the war is over. And we are the same color as England, which makes us look like a puppet of England. I love it. I'm just gonna ignore that. Everybody's happy. Samurai Republic. Um, <laughs> oh man, this is terrible. Uh, we're gonna go in and just completely gut the military now. Just, just for money purposes. So, they should all be marginalized now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they are all thoroughly marginalized. Okay, which is fine. We have our Republic. It's uh, 1886 and there is still no Germany. Alright. I can officially start to go after China here. This is probably the last major thing I do. I want to realize Hideyoshi's ambition and of course take Korea. So, there's a trick to this that I managed to pull off one time and it's really just winning the war economically never actually invading uh, the mainland you see uh, naval invasions in this game are kind of tricky so uh, what I'm gonna do is declare war and kind of just sit there while the Chinese economy tanks from mobilizing all their troops and they eventually capitulate it worked for me before so I'm gonna try that again here so what we're going to do is essentially just conquer a state in Korea. And then in this, we're just going to uh, conquer the rest of the states in Korea. Or I guess just half the states because we don't have enough political movements anymore. And we're at war. Now, all we do is sit here. This is all we do. And we watch the cost of their war skyrocket, and eventually, they give in. This is the easiest way to win a war. It, it takes a while, and it's the cheesiest way to win a war, too. But because naval invasions are kind of a complicated thing, at least from my own um, discovery, and I know people, other people have been complaining about it, too, uh, this is the way to kind of cheese a landing and get yourself a foothold in, in the continent here. I'm going to start bolstering the shogunate. I want the shogunate to be back in power, I just want to keep the republic. It's a weird concept, I know, but it, it makes sense to me. So we are just about at the end of the war here, and I just want to show, um, we haven't paid anything for this war, and, uh, the Chinese have, Chinese and Koreans have paid upwards of six million. Uh, no one dead, no one wounded, uh, not, not a problem at all, but, um, the massive amount of money they have paid for their army, which, uh, has completely just ruined their country <laughs> to the point that they are about to uh, capitulate probably yep the following war goals have been enforced upon great Qing so there we go we took a chunk out of Korea I think this is a good point to uh, bring this game to a close it is 1890 uh, the world is um, I wouldn't say in, in a better shape than it, it was. I think it's it's probably in a much worse shape. But all in all, I, I've gotten Japan to a point that I, I've wanted to get them to for a while, and it only took uh, two civil wars. So that that's that's a, a record. Um, I might try this again and do it even better. But like I said, there's such a randomness to it. The important thing to take away, though, is that I have the samurai back in the government. They're slowly gaining more power, but we are a republic. Um, and of course, with the samurai coming back into power, maybe they will eventually rise up to the point where they will be the ones in charge of the re of the republic. Uh, I, that would be awesome to see. So from our, our parliamentary republic, which has elected officials that are voted upon by, by landed elites, like the, the samurai themselves, um, and then, of course, they elect bureaucrats uh, 
who actually go about running the country. We also have a professional army, we have secret police, uh, and we have private education. We don't have the serfdom anymore, and basically we have our entire economy opened up. So this is really everything I wanted to have happen. Un unfortunately, it took until 1890 before we got to this point. And, and I could play past this point, too, and, and really try to expand more into Asia. But I, I'm, at a, I'm at a, you know, safe point here. I have a massive amount of gold reserves. Uh, I'm actually building more gold mines in Hokkaido. That's why my, my income is, is like that. But I have a massive amount of, of gold saved up. So I'm not worried about that at all. If we wanted to, and as you can see right here, we could go down the path right now for the Meiji Restoration, uh, granted in 1890, but we could do it. Uh, the only thing we'd have to do is just go and take uh, the Shogunate out of the government. I purposefully put them in the government, but if we wanted to, we could kick them out of the government and this uh, event would start going again. It would start ticking. It takes about 10 years for it to, to go. And then you get some events after that that you know, has you abolish the samurai. It really, it's really straightforward once you get to that point. Um, it's just getting to this point where you could do that. Now, I'm not going to do that, though. I don't want to have the Meiji Restoration. I want to keep uh, the shogunate in the government. And, in, you know, hypothetically, they could rise up again to once again rule the government because we still have landed voting. Uh, so it's, it's entirely possible. But either way, this is what I've been able to accomplish after playing uh, a ton of Victoria 3 to try to figure out ways in which I could accomplish this. Could I have done it better? Absolutely. But the random nature of how this game works in terms of managing your own politics can, can be such a hassle to deal with that on, I, it's hard to have predicted what to do. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed watching Japan become a proper samurai republic. And um, thank you all for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this one and found it to be um, entertaining.